So when I hear a saxophone player that I really like the sound of, that I really admire, I want to know how they practice, what do they do, what exercises do they do, what things do they work on to get that sound. And that's the reason why in sax school we hold these regular masterclasses with these world-class players. And we did one this week with Leo P from Too Many Zoos, incredible Barry Sax player. And uh, in that session I asked Leo how he creates his sound and that's what we're going to talk about today because he shared a fantastic exercise that I want to share with you guys too. We'll get into that in just a sec, but don't forget if you're new here, click subscribe, hit the bell notification thing so you don't miss out on these. We're doing these videos all the time. Okay, let's get started. Hey guys, it's Nigel here. So I love running these regular masterclasses for our SAC school members. And in fact, I'm talking to our members all the time and there's thousands, over 10,000 students now that we've helped and I'm always asking them who they'd most like to see for these special exclusive masterclasses and one of the most requested people in the last few months has been Leo P. You might have seen Leo P on YouTube, he's got some crazy videos, I've had millions of views of him playing in the underground with, um, no, they call it the subway in New York, don't they? In the subway with the band Too Many Zoos. I mean, check this out. Amazing. Now, I love Leo's sound, I love his articulation, I love his rhythm. Fantastic. And he did another incredible show in England a couple of years ago at the BBC Proms, which just sort of blew everyone's mind. So I had to get him in to do a special masterclass for Sax School. And in this masterclass, a really long session, we dug into all sorts of things about his approach to tonguing, about his approach to performing, about his approach to building up his stamina as a player, uh, also about how he thinks about uh, improvising, and what sort of things inspire him, loads and loads of stuff that just, I know for most of our students, it just completely blew their minds and really got us all fired up, which is fantastic. But one of the topics I was really interested in was his tone. What exercises does he use to build his tone? Well, this is what he had to say. So I was first introduced to this concept by uh, Gary Smullyan. If you don't know Gary Smullyan, he's one of the baddest Barry Sax players ever, ever to live. Go look him up. If you haven't heard of Gary Smalling, go look at Gary Smalling. So I used to study from Joe Temperley in Manhattan School of Music. Um, unfortunately, halfway through, he got pretty sick, uh, and uh, he actually passed away. Um, and during that time, they had a fill-in Barry Sachs teacher, and that was Gary Smalling. And this dude is the man. So he taught me this overtone exercise, and – not overtone exercise, sorry, long tone. I always, I always mix those up. Long tone exercise. So what you do is you start on the high F and you do a breath attack. So you're going, ha, ha. So like come from the back of your throat, like ha, ha. And you start as soft as you possibly can. And then you go until you get as loud as you possibly can. And once you hit the peak of your volume, you switch to uh, E. So you start at a high F, and then you get as soft as you possibly can until you can barely hear the note. And then you go F to E flat, F to D, F to C sharp, and then all the way down to F to A. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. All right. And I, I've been doing this for like eight years, so it might be a little difficult, but part of the process of this is that it's basically impossible. You want it to uniformly get louder and then uniformly get softer, like perfectly. So I love exercises that you can never truly master. So eventually you want to go all the way down the horn. And the hardest one is. Whew. So 
this is a compound exercise. Every exercise I do is a compound exercise. I'm never just working one thing. Believe it or not, I'm working on my sound, intonation, and I'm working on my articulation at the same time. So what you want to do is control the saxophone. You are in control. It is not in control of you. And that is the that is the number one thing that I always tell people is like you have to tame this beast. It's a wild bronco and it's not easy. You, you gotta show the saxophone you're in control of this ship. It, it's a it's a two person endeavor, but you're the captain. Um, so you want to have as much control of the saxophone as possible. That's why I do every single interval, and uh, it gets harder and harder and harder. If you want to do the hardest version, you do the low. You start from the low A or B flat. You know whatever you're accustomed to. No offense to the low B flatters in here. You know it's okay too. So this is the hardest version. See, it's like almost impossible to start that note soft. And you want to go all the way up the horn. So uh, as far as long time tones go, practice this as many days as you can in a row. Um, the exercise is not valuable to do hours a day one day. It's only valuable to do once or twice or three times a day and do it every single day. Consistency is the most important thing in music to me. Um, that's what I've found from my peers. That's what I've found from my own experience and everything. So that exercise is kind of a gateway into the way I tongue. Um, now, Gary didn't teach me this. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, when yeah. you're doing that, when you're doing that exercise, then Leo, fantastic, by the way. It's a, an interesting, different angle on the uh, things that we've talked about before, which is great. Do you uh, do you have the tuner with you? Do you are you checking referencing yeah. with the tuner? Yeah. Because that's really tough, man. Starting on high, particularly on a Barry, getting that in tune, and then doing those leaps like that, that and doing the dynamics. So it's quite a yeah. challenging exercise. Yeah. Yeah, that might not have been my best uh, performance of it. Um, oh, no, but, man. I think it's brilliant. And what a great thing to aspire to. And I guess, like you say, it's one of those things that every time you do it, you're going to get a little bit better at it, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like not – I always tell my students, I'm like, it's cool if it sounds kind of terrible because later it's going to sound less terrible. Um, maybe someday it will sound not terrible. Um, I love making it anything difficult. I love – losing i love losing i love getting defeated because it it's the best chance for growth if you're good at something that's so boring part of this exercise is like it's like a meditation because you're taking these huge breaths and you're giving it all you got like you want it to be like <gasps> and you're not listening to anything or paying attention to anybody else or looking at your phone or doing anything else you're just doing this you know and if you do from F to E, E flat, D, C sharp, blah, 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 the whole thing. It takes about 15 minutes. And it's like a painful 15 minutes, but <laughs> it is so worth it. Um, I did this every day for like at least four or five years. At one point, I honestly got pretty lazy with practicing on the road because it just, it gets a lot playing every day and traveling all the time. Um, but during the last month, I've been getting back on it, and I I noticed a difference. I think ha the the quality of saxophone player you are is a combination of how much you practiced and how often you practice. I think it's a combination. Man, that was such a great session. And in fact, in the rest of the session, we covered so many amazing things. Now, for members, you can actually watch the replay of that entire session inside the Sax School members area, along with all the other masterclasses that we've done as well, with some amazing people like Grace Kelly, uh, like Jeff Cashua, fantastic smooth jazz player, or Freddie V from Average White Band, or Tom Pollitzer from Tower of Power, lead tenor player. There's tons of these sessions, and they're so great as a learning opportunity. So you can check that out inside Sax School. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more, go check us out at mcgillmusic.com. Also, there's tons of other stuff on the channel here to help you with learning about gear, learning about techniques, uh, learning how to improve your playing and your improvising. It's all here on the channel. So have some fun exploring. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell notification. And uh, keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.